The new Hyatt Regency in Samoy is a fresh, modern take on what big box resort chains should strive to be. Find out what's so appealing and what's not, coming up. Just opened in July of 2021, the resort practically still has that new resort smell. This 140 room property was designed by a powerhouse trio and is as fresh and vibrant as every photo you've ever seen suggests. First off though, where are we? The airport, owned and operated by Bangkok Airways, is located smack in the middle of Boput, which is where the vast majority of hotels in Samoy are. The famous Chuang Beach is a stone's throw away, and then we have the North Chuang neighborhood, where the Hyatt is located, just a 10 minute drive from the airport. Also, a 7-Eleven is a 10 minute walk north. The entrance, or at least what you can see from the outside, is very understated, and not paying attention, I was actually surprised when we turned in. So this is the third time I'm going to call the hotel fresh, and it'll probably happen again, but it's because it's true. That said, there are a few gimmicky bits here and there. For example, the hotel and every piece of literature about it never fails to mention that the lobby is, quote, the longest lobby arrival point in Samoy, as if that is what matters. Long or short though, it's still striking to see in person. The stark white geometric space filled with trees, freeform shaped furniture, and flowing front desk uniforms in a definite Mediterranean shade of blue. As a package, it's stunning. I hope year after year, they're able to maintain the facility so it continues to impress. In the middle of the space are some of the 600 Yangna trees which predated the resort. Yangna trees are impossibly straight with a full canopy and are considered a vulnerable species, with their bark often used for traditional medicines. The preservation of these were one of the main priorities of Wanapan Poi Po Prapa, the renowned landscaping architect responsible for the grounds of the property. Let's be honest though, we're all here for the view, and a spectacular one it is. Kun Poi and her landscaping team worked alongside the Office of Bangkok Architecture and August Designs to create the master plan for these eight hillside acres. The cascading pools are a centerpiece of the design with three layers. On top, the family pool, large with breathtaking views, attached to a smaller kids pool to the side. One tier below, a reflection pool that shimmers at night, and the lowest level, designed to be more colorful and reflective of a beach party atmosphere. It's rare, for me at least, to look at a design and then look at the corporate language behind it and actually see the connection. The designers say of the pool's design, quote, the swirling of dark and light colored tiles mimics the gleaming effects of the waves reflecting off sunlight and gradual change in tones resonates with the ever-changing color of the ocean throughout the day. A mouthful, but it works. One unfortunate result of such large and stunning pools though, is a lack of chairs. Now, the resort certainly was not at capacity when I was there, so getting loungers was not a problem. But throughout all of the property, there's no way that there's 140 sets of loungers available. If there was even half of that, I'd be surprised. If you want a sunbathe poolside, make sure you grab those chairs early.
The majority of the rooms at the resort are located in low-rise structures that you see now. There are a variety of categories available to book, including plunge pool rooms, which are located on the backside ground floor with their own small private pool. Due to the weeks of rain prior to my arrival though, there were some repairs that needed to be done to those rooms, which meant I was luckily upgraded to one of the seven oceanfront pool villas, which we'll see in a bit. Flowers are beautiful, no argument there, but I think that the best landscaping I've seen in Thailand is always all green. Different shapes, textures and shades, and more lush than you can imagine. Here is no exception. Here's that middle tier reflecting pool that I spoke about earlier. To be honest, I didn't even notice that it wasn't a swimming pool until I was editing this video and couldn't find the stairs. And let's pause right here. This frame is the second gimmick, one of the gallery of eight, eight Instagrammable spots throughout the property that are marked with these literal frames. Why do I not appreciate the gimmicks? because they're not necessary. We can see the view, and I think the frames just get in the way. One more tier lower and we have the colorful beachfront adults only pool. And finally, we have the beach. Yes, it's beautiful, and yes, it's tiny. And the area around the sandy beach can be a bit rocky. Also note, a single row of chairs and no room for another. The beach itself is that comfortably coarse sand that thankfully doesn't stick to everything, and gives off that sound that only rocky beaches can. Along the beachfront, we can use this path to reach my villa for the stay. The path is used only by the seven villas plus any other guests that are going for a wander or to the rocks for the sunrise. I like how the landscaping feels both manicured and natural at the same time. I don't know about you, but I get strong Hawaii vibes from this area in front of the villas. Maybe Kauai more specifically. It's almost intensely beautiful, if that's even a thing. And here we are, villa number three, but let's be polite and we're going to use the front door.
As of course you've already seen, the resort is on a hillside so it's not the most ideal place for those with mobility issues. But there is buggy service available around the clock, but they can only go so far. Guests here are generally a younger family crowd, as it's suited really well for them. It's a distinctly laid back crowd though, which I appreciate with my omnipresent flip flops and all. Each villa is a standalone structure with indoor and outdoor living areas, plus a really uniquely designed pool. The main indoor space is tiered with the bedroom above and the living space below. Of any practically new resort, of course, there are outlets built in around the bed, but not so much around the living space. You'll notice a strangely large amount of space devoted to benches. Not sure what the thought process was here, I appreciate the symmetry and the low profile, but probably would have appreciated a desk even more. Even without, I was still able to set up my workstation and work comfortably, but only with my own extension cord, which plugged into the back of the TV. I'll be honest, I'm not sure why I like it so much. It's not like I'm carrying cases of drinks with me when I travel, but the full-sized refrigerator, it's a nice touch. Just why not? As with everything these days, the menus and in-room information are accessed via QR code, which was conveniently placed. Also appreciate the premium teas, Nespresso, and unlimited supply of glass bottled water. The woven sliding doors, which can be found in all room categories, though in different colors, are a focal point of the guest room design here, and they're as well made as they are refreshing to look at. Behind the bedroom is a large open closet with plenty of storage space and another bench.
The bathroom was a showstopper for sure. First things first, this giant bathtub. You might look at it and think, yeah, okay, an hour to fill up. Au contraire, as you'll soon see. The walls are these tiny mosaic tiles in a beautiful gradient pattern. I really hope they weren't laid by hand. A signature of the villa bathrooms are the curved glass walls surrounding the toilet room as well as the indoor shower. Purely aesthetic and I approve. We'll see where this door leads in a bit, but first we have the well-stocked his and hers, or hers and hers, or his and his, or their vanities, each with its own mini bench, or stool I guess. And now about that bathtub. This is the most water pressure I've ever seen in any hotel or household. This has to be the same water line that fills the pools. The bathtub was filled up in under eight minutes. The glass doors open completely to make a combined living space. When the doors are open, the AC turns off, as it should, but I do wish you could at least keep the AC fan on or something. I love having the doors wide open while I work, but I also don't want to literally melt into the chair. One no oh, two notes about the doors while we look at the outside. First, these doors are heavy, like heavy, heavy. Second, by default, you're given a key card which opens that normal front entry door, but they don't give you anything to lock the villa itself, which is odd since we know that you can access the villa from the beach. Anyway, when I asked, they did provide me with a key which I and the staff took a while to figure out. Just before we almost broke the key, actually. A better system is needed here. The hotel, as with many hotels in Thailand these days, is dog friendly. However, only in the villas, which is reasonable enough. Tucked away back here, we have the most amazing outdoor shower. Remember that water pressure? Yeah, it's out here too. And just to show off the different modes that you can have in your villa. Straight out front from your villa is a small beach area good enough for dipping your toes. Now on to dinner options. Sassoon, the grill and beach bar, was originally my plan, but they were unexpectedly closed during my nights there. Seem they were repairing some furniture, which doesn't really make sense, it's brand new. And I wasn't the only guest that was confused by it either. Either way, let's use our imaginations. It would be an ideal setting.
And that brings us to the silliest food item I've seen in a while. And by silly, I mean dumb in a polite way. I had a Caesar salad that I had to work for. Nothing was cut and all of the dressing was literally inside a single leaf on the bottom. I actually hoped that this was a mistake. Anyway, it tasted good and was followed by a Masaman curry. As the beachside grill wasn't open, the other option was at Yangna, the poolside restaurant. Typically, this is the Thai restaurant and where the breakfast buffet is also served. But since Sassoon was closed, they were serving that menu. The food was really good actually. It takes a lot for me to order a hot soup in the tropics, but this pistu soup, which was green for some reason, was superb followed by a nice chicken dish with a side of Provencal mushrooms. Now, in this part of Samui, there are no true sunsets, but that doesn't mean that we don't get our own little beautiful show. And after dark, the pools come out to play. And of course we have the lobby, which seems to make it into almost every shot. By the way, those are not just flashing lights. Those are strobing, traveling lights, the length of the lobby, as if signaling for a plane to come in and land. I think they're pretty lucky that one hasn't done so by mistake. The Christmas tree was tasteful, if not a bit too bright. And then we have the beautiful reflecting pool that I mentioned, Dazzles at Night. And at night, the underside of the larger pool also turns into a fountain. If you're a morning person, you're in for a really special treat as the sun rises here, and in Samui in general, are amazing. And if you're a true vampire, feel free to skip ahead like 90 seconds or so, while I let Mother Nature take the wheel for a bit. Cobalt is a small juice and pool bar next to Yangna where we'll have breakfast. 
Unfortunately, breakfast doesn't begin until 7 o'clock, which is kind of unheard of these days. Inside, on the one side is the primary indoor seating area, which is nice and well spaced out, but it's not where I choose to sit. On the other side though is the terrific buffet. So like usual, it has all of the breads, cold cuts, salads, and yogurts that you'd expect. But the really good things come from the hot stations. On this side, there was a satay station, a variety of hot dishes, as well as multiple dim sum selections that you could order to be sent to your table. On the other side is the western station with more egg dishes, an egg station, and also some really tasty grilled chicken. This area I think is the best place to eat, and here's just a sampling of a few of the dishes. After breakfast, we head up to the gym area. So the spa has not officially opened at the time of my visit. On the map it had a marker for a beachside spa, but there was actually nothing there. When walking up to the fitness center, there was a beautiful door on the right. I assume that's where the spa will be when it opens, but for the gym we went upstairs to the left. It was a decent size, overlooking the road. The only thing I didn't enjoy were the mesh walkways. I don't mind that you can see through them, but when you can see through them and they flex considerably with each step, not the most comforting thing in the world, especially perhaps after a big breakfast. Like I said, this is a great property for families and there's a kids club under the kids pool as well as a unique outdoor play area. And finally, I couldn't not show this Superfly transport that they arranged for me. I'm not sure if they own the car, but it was definitely their driver. Either way, the first Hermes transit van I've ever seen. Pretty chic. And now onto the flip-flop score. The room design was ideal. Condition-wise, mostly great. Just a few little things like the private pool and the outdoor chairs starting to show some wear. Service was top-notch all around, with quite a bit of management presence as well. The common areas and the grounds, I think everyone would agree, were beautiful and get full scores. Cleanliness, I include health and safety related things in this category, and honestly, this is the only property in Thailand where I consistently saw staff not wearing masks properly. Not just a handful of times, a seven overall. The food venues, assuming that they're all open, are top notch, and the food, except for that weird salad, was great. Amenities, nothing to fault here at a 10. Finally, the beach. It's just too small, and when the resort is full, seating is going to be an issue with a 6. Overall, a deserving 90 out of 100. 
After some poor experiences at Hyatt Properties in the last years, I was thrilled to have such an enjoyable stay here and would recommend it to just about anyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for clicking that like button and subscribing for two new hotel or flight reviews every week. See you soon.